Some things just don't get the credit they deserve. They work hard, make a big difference, but for whatever reason, don't get as much time in the limelight as they deserve. Kind of like Jesse behind the camera. In this video, I want to talk about the hardworking but lesser recognized in the world of functional mushrooms. These mushrooms aren't considered superstars, but perhaps one day they might be. First up is Anoki, otherwise known as Flamulina volutipes. Believe it or not, this is one of the first mushrooms to ever be cultivated. They started cultivating it around 800 AD. Not 1800, but 800. It is a super unique gourmet mushroom that is pretty easy to cultivate, but is purposely cultivated under low light conditions in a high CO2 environment. And because of that, it gets these really long stems and tiny little caps. What's cool is that this mushroom in the wild looks totally different from the cultivated variety. If you found Flamulina volutipes while out walking in the woods, it's much larger, it's kind of a darker brown or orangey color, and it looks like a completely different species. Fun fact, in 1993, cultures of Enoki actually went into space on the shuttle Columbia. They were trying to see how the cultures would react to low gravity conditions, and to be honest, I'm not sure how you get the funding for that type of thing, but hey, it gave me a fun fact for this video. Minoki contains compounds that have been extracted in research for a number of different benefits. These are protein-bound polysaccharides known as proflamin and flamulin. Proflamin is a beta-glucan and beta-glucans are these types of polysaccharides found in functional mushrooms that are responsible for supporting our immune system. Now proflamin, the one found in Enoki, is orders of magnitude, meaning way smaller than the typical beta-glucan found in other medicinal mushrooms. This means that this particular protein-bound polysaccharide contains way more protein than sugar, which might make it a much more efficient immune system modulator. Enoki has also been studied for its potential anti-cancer benefits. There was a one study done in Nagano, Japan that wanted to see if there was a difference in the cancer death rate between flamulina farmers or people that grew enoki and others, just the general population. And the thought there being that, of course, if they were a flamulina farmer, they would be eating a lot of this mushroom. They did a pretty large study based on 174,000 inhabitants. They found that the cancer death rate for enoki farmers was actually significantly lower at 97 per 100,000 for the enoki farmers versus 160 per 100,000 for everyone else. Obviously, with something like this, there are a lot more potential variables, but still, it is an interesting data point. Anoki has also been researched for its ability to prevent serious food allergy, or at least reduce the severity of food allergy reactions. There was one study where they wanted to test this out on mice, and basically what they did was take a protein that was extracted from the fruiting body of Anoki, a protein called fungal immunomodulatory protein FVE. The mice were then challenged with an allergen, and what they found was that the mice that were treated with this protein were much less susceptible to anaphylaxis, which is actually pretty amazing. Now, obviously allergies are pretty severe. If you have like a peanut allergy or something, don't think you can just go eat enoki and be protected from you know the deadly effects of peanuts, but it is still pretty interesting and it's something that we should definitely be looking into how enoki might be able to help people with allergies. Next up is Auricularia auricula. This one is also known as the wood ear mushroom because well, it grows on wood and it kind of looks like an ear. You have no doubt probably seen this mushroom out in the wild. It grows on logs and it is quite common. It's a jelly fungus which is usually used in soups and it kind of has this crunchy slash rubbery texture. Now you might have guessed at this point, but wood ear does in fact have some potential medicinal properties. First off, the wood ear mushroom is considered to be a very strong antioxidant. There are other more famous mushrooms that also have this property like chaga and certain extracts of turkey tail, but it is still pretty interesting to know that the wood ear also shares these properties. This mushroom also shows strong potential cardioprotective properties through various mechanisms. The polyphenols in wood ear mushrooms have also been studied for its ability to lower total blood cholesterol, triglycerides and LDL, and enhance the levels of HDL cholesterol. Next up is Tremella fusiformis, also just known as Tremella, sometimes called the snow fungus. Now this one is a jelly fungus that's used in cooking. It's quite common to use as a culinary mushroom, but it also has some potential medicinal properties for things like nourishing the brain and for skin health. And to be honest, out of all the lesser known medicinal mushrooms we talk about today, Tremella has the best potential to really be a superstar. Other than its medicinal properties, one really interesting thing about Tremella is actually how it grows, because for the longest time people thought you could 
couldn't really cultivate Tremella. And that's because they needed to figure out that Tremella actually parasitizes another fungus. So in order to grow it, you basically need to have a log that has one fungus growing on it, and then you add the Tremella to it, the Tremella will eat that fungus, parasitize it, and then eventually fruit. Now that this dual culture method has been figured out, the cultivation of Tremella is actually quite common. The main bioactive components in Tremella are polysaccharides, with the main bioactive polysaccharide being, and I'm gonna have to read this right off the sheet, glucoronooxylomannan? Glucoronoxylomannan? Glucoronoxylomannan. Gluconoronoxylomannan. <laughs> <laughs> Gluco. Anyways, gluco, whatever. One interesting thing is that Tremella polysaccharides have actually been studied for the potential ability to protect against acute radiation exposure. Water extracts from Tremella have been shown to have potential in treating neurological damage. They've also been traditionally used as kind of a brain nourishing mushroom, which is interesting because typically when people think of a functional mushroom that's good for cognitive health or brain health, they think of lion's mane, but Tremella actually shares in this characteristic. Of course, we can't forget about the cosmetic application of Tremella either. It's used for moisture retention and skin protection and also has anti-inflammatory and anti-allergenic properties. That's why Tremella mushroom is typically called the beauty mushroom or the mushroom of youth. So even though Tremella kind of looks like a loofah, you actually have to eat it to get the benefits. Next up is Agaricus blazii, also known as Agaricus superfensis. And this is such a cool mushroom. I've actually had the chance to see this one grow. It grows very similar to Agaricus bisporus, which is the common button mushroom. But the compounds inside of Agaricus blazii are much different, which is why it's considered to be a functional mushroom. Agaricus blazii contains a wide range of immune supporting polysaccharides, similar to many other more famous medicinal mushrooms. Most interestingly, Agaricus Agaricus blazii has been studied for its potential ability to reduce allergic reactions. There was one study that was done on mice that used mostly Agaricus blazii. There were some other mushrooms in there as well, like lion's mane and maitake, but 82% of the blend that they used was Agaricus blazii, and they found that it did reduce allergic reactions in mice. Agaricus blazii is also a delicious gourmet mushroom. If you can get your hands on it, it's not an easy one to find. Next up is oyster mushrooms, or Pleurotus ostriatus, and of course you've heard of oyster mushrooms in general and in the gourmet sense, but you might not have known that they're actually considered to be a medicinal mushroom. Believe it or not, they are even sometimes available in extract powder form. But you might be wondering what is so interesting about oyster mushrooms in a medicinal sense. First off is something called ergothionine. Now this is a very interesting compound and oyster mushrooms actually contain a really high concentration of it. Ergothionine is something that humans need. In fact, some scientists consider it to be a vitamin and it's exclusively acquired through the diet. It's found in the highest concentrations in a variety of mushrooms bacteria, but also in meat like beef, lamb, pork. It's pretty hard not to be an evangelist for mushrooms when there's so much evidence pointing out just how useful they are. Even the non-superstar ones do have the ability to make our guts healthier, make our skin healthier, and even nourish our gray matter. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.